Several years ago, I sat down with one of the church leaders of the biggest denomination in the nation. And I explained to him this concept. And he looked at me as if he didn't know what hit him. He was dumbfounded. I hope and pray you get this. Because this is one of the most important concepts you will learn about in the Bible. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. Whoever is born of God doesn't commit sin. Because his, that is God's, seed remains in him and he can't sin because he is born of God. Now, what is this talking about? It's talking about the nature of God. When you are born again, you have the nature of God. That is truly born again. But in order to understand this concept, we need to dig a little bit deeper. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says that God made man in his image. Sometimes in order to understand how God works, you got to look at man because man is made in the image of God. How is it that John can say that those who are born of God cannot sin? Because the seed of God remains in him. The nature of God is in him. Everything that God creates is corruptible, is perishable. Since man is made in the image of God, man is like God in many ways. And here is one of those ways. Everything that man makes with his hands is corruptible. Everything that man makes with his hands is perishable. There's nothing that is created by man that will not one day end up either as dust or ashes. Everything that comes from man in regards to what man creates is perishable, corruptible. Likewise, everything that God creates is perishable, corruptible. But God himself is not corruptible, not perishable. Therefore, those who partake in the nature of God, or as John puts it here, those who have the seed of God in them, likewise is not perishable, not corruptible. You see, sin is moral corruption. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. God said, I form the light. His form is light. He is light. Yet he says here, he creates darkness. How can that be? He's the light, but he creates darkness. That which comes from his... How does he create darkness? Well, he just removes himself. If, if he is the light, in order for him to create darkness in the room, he just walks out of the room. And he goes on to say, I make peace. He is made out of peace. He produces peace. He makes peace. Or you can say, he is made out of peace. He is peace and creates calamity. Again, how does God create calamity if he is peace? He walks out of the room. And if you are foolish enough to block him out to reject God, or reject his word, then you can't expect anything other than darkness and calamity. Let's read this one more time. I form the light. He's made out of the light. And he creates darkness. I make peace. He is made out of peace, but he creates calamity. So that which he creates is corruptible. That which he creates is perishable. And this is why Adam sinned because he was created and not born because once again everything that god creates is corruptible is perishable and sin is moral corruption and jesus could not sin because he was born of god that is why jesus said to nicodemus in john chapter 3 you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. Much less enter it. To see the kingdom of God, you must be born again. You must go from knowing God as your creator to knowing God as your father. And I got to shake my head every time I, th I hear someone say, Father God, Father God. Well, no, listen, if you are part of the sinful creation, the corruptible, perishable, sinful creation, 
then God is God to you. But if you are really born again, if you are born into his family, then God is Father. You don't call him God anymore, you call him Father. When did Jesus call God God? Either when he was talking to his sinful creation who knew him only as God and not as Father, or when he's on the cross and he became sin. Then he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Before that, it was always Father. When he became that serpent on a cross, then as the serpent, he knew God as God and not as Father. As the Son of God, he called God Father and not God. See, Satan knows God as God, not as Father. And not everybody who is created of God is a child of God. In fact, most people who are created of God are not God's children. Consider John chapter 8 when Jesus said to a whole group of people, your father is the devil, not God. You have to be born again in order to really have God as your father. And when you get born again, the seed of God comes into you and that is when you can claim 1 John chapter 3 verse 9. And believe me, most people who think they're born again, they're really not born again. If you're born again, you don't need anybody to tell you you're born again. When the Spirit of Almighty God comes in you in a tangible way, you don't need anybody to tell you you're born again. In fact, you are telling other people that you're born again. And in order to get born again, you must repent. Make straight the way of the Lord. If the queen or a king of a different nation is due to visit your house, you're going to be cleaning up a little bit. And if you don't, that's very, very disrespectful. Clean up. Repent with all your might. And then invite him in. Forgive those whom you have something against. Make sure you've got it all taken care of. Pray, say, Lord, show me, is there anybody I need to forgive? And when he brings people to your mind, tell God, I forgive so-and-so. For be specific. Clean out the unforgiveness. Clean out the sin. Clean house. You want to make sure you're forgivable. Remember, Jesus said, if you don't forgive others, God is not going to forgive you. Make sure you're forgivable by forgiving everybody you possibly can. Forgiving is not forgetting. Forgiving just means you make a decision not to hold that against them, not to hold a grudge against them. That's all it means. It means you extend your grace to that person in its full measure. Do so if you haven't done so already.